Welcome to the future. Hello, beautiful people. We are live. We are so live right now. We're on Facebook and on YouTube, practically starting on time, 11.05. That's pretty good. That's on time by me. So today we're going to be talking to somebody super special. Her name is Ashley Smithers, and she does incredible, powerful presentations using PowerPoint and Keynote. There's a lot to learn from her. I thought I was doing this pretty good until I talked to her. She's got a lot of tips and tricks and techniques, and she's going to be talking about the seven deadly sins of presentation design. You know, as I do, if you have to give a presentation, it can be very nerve wracking. So it's nice to have an ace in the hole, if you will, something up your sleeve. So this is a time if you're a CEO or if you're going to do a big launch somewhere, you're going to want to talk to somebody like Ashley. So we're going to get into it. This is raw. And here's her look. Here's her company, and this is what she looks like. She's a little cleaned up for our show today. Her studio is called 1821, and she's based out of Toronto, Canada. Her name is Ashley Smithers, as I said. And um, she was trained uh, originally as an industrial designer. And so I have so many questions about how Ashley became a designer doing keynote decks. All right. So without further ado, let us roll the titles. Mm. All right, here we are. Let's get Ashley on the phone with us or on the video conference. Ashley, how are you doing today? Good, how's it going? It's going great. So I don't want to chit-chat a little bit too much because I think you've worked really hard on an amazing presentation. So should we get into it or are you are you feeling good? Are you feeling comfortable? I just want to make sure you're I feel good. good. No, like, you look like, good, I'm, by the way. I'm good. I'm good in this. Come on. I, yeah, I know you. You're going <laughs> to tackle me and I'm right back to Hercules. I got your back, back, girl. I got your back. Let's go. So let's but do you this. Wanna, yeah. Let's dive right in. Okay. Now, you guys, as Ashley's giving her presentation, Mark, myself, and Eric will be monitoring your questions on Facebook and on YouTube. So first, watch the presentation. And as your questions come up, we'll be collecting them so that I can ask them at the appropriate time. I don't want to break her flow. Okay. Go ahead. Take over, man. Oh, you! I thought you were going to ask me how an industrial designer turns oh, into a presentation okay. designer. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> just do go for it. Man. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Okay. I got a bunch of questions actually. Yeah. Maybe the yeah. first thing that I should do just to clear it up, and as people are tuning in, a lot of people are thinking, "What the heck is presentation design?" And they're thinking, "Oh, I use Keynote. I use PowerPoint. Psh, there's nothing here." Yeah. And I thought the same thing too, because I remember when a client called me in the past and they asked me, "Hey, Chris, do you know anybody that is presentation design?" I'm like, what do you mean? Like, you know, to do keynote. And I was thinking, I know the tool set. I can create a template. And I had a lot to learn from that point. Obviously, he wasn't talking about a graphic designer doing a keynote presentation. We're talking about crafting the message and really communicating ideas to persuade people. Typically, that's what happens. Now, I had in my Mm -hmm. mind a while back that I wanted to charge $10,000 for a day's worth of work. And I just, for whatever reason, I had this stuck in my mind. So I wanted to do something that somebody else would find to be valuable. So whenever somebody asked me to do something, I'd be like, that's 10000 bucks. It didn't even matter what it was. Design a logo, 10000 bucks. Keynote deck, 10000 bucks. So to my surprise, eventually people did say yes to the keynote deck. And I thought I was straight up baller. I was like, yeah, 10000 bucks to do a keynote deck. And then I talked to you and you told me how much you're charging. I was like, oh my God. You're pretty much like, boy, yeah. step back, step back. <laughs> I'm going to show you how a pro does this. And it just blew my mind. So I learned something there. One, maybe I was charging too little. But two, perhaps the truth is you're doing something way beyond what I was doing. So now I'm super interested. And your beginnings as an industrial designer, like what? How, did, how does one yeah. become what it is that you do today? So like I, um, I came out of high school and I was like, I'm going to be an industrial designer because I grew up with like a really like a super carpenter industrial design kind of dad. Right. So I thought that's what I'm meant for. And I went in and they were all like, oh, you're going to be so good because of your father. And I sucked. Like I, my <laughs> products were, I would bring them in and I would present it. Like we had to present a mousetrap. Mice would have been like living in it making babies in my mouse trap. But the thing that it that happened was one of my teachers took me aside and they said, so we know that this is not for you. That's, you shouldn't be doing this, but we've noticed that you have this gift that when you do the identity around it and you tell the story of how you came to have that product, oh. it's engaging. Yeah. Nice. So I had an amazing teacher who was mm-hmm. like, I'm gonna take you under my wing And like, while you're doing this, I want you to go and learn and work as a designer, like a graphic designer, so that you can 
get your actual career started. Yeah. That's a oh, great yeah. teacher. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it, they were awful. Like they, <laughs> I sliced my foot open. I sliced, like I, I busted my eye just trying to make like a mailbox. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. It was the worst. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But okay. everybody has a product and everybody needs to sell it. Yeah. So right? I, I have a question for you. So sometimes we get into the state of mind where you think I'm going to be this thing. And even though it was painfully obvious, like literally painfully obvious, like cutting parts of your body, when somebody yeah. told you, maybe this isn't for you, we see that you have a gift in this. How did you feel? How did you react to that? Um, I was actually relieved. Oh, I think. okay. Yeah. I was relieved because I knew, I knew that I knew it. Um, and I would get excited about this part. So I didn't really, I didn't know that. Like that could be a job for me, right? And when I graduated, I moved to the UK and I was doing design work um, in a financial firm. And then I came back and I got my, I got the best job ever. Mm. I got to work in a, with a capital markets firm, like the biggest one in the country at that point. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was, it was just like, I got beat up and I was working weekends, but I saw the public markets and I saw like how investor relations and capital markets are so cool. And they started, my mentor started bringing me into meetings to see how the decks were built. Right. It wasn't just designing them. It was like, how are this, how is the story built? You have all this stuff to say, how are we going to make this raise millions of dollars? You know, and it, so it was just amazing. Okay. So what and year is this? I was this? hooked. What year is this and how long have you been out of college? <laughs> I have been doing, I've been, I opened up 1821 while I was in school. So I've been doing this for 15 years. And wow. I've been, yeah, designing like in the capital market space for about 12. Okay. So for some yeah. people who don't know what the capital market space is, can you say that in layman terms? Yeah. So it is, um, it's, when companies want to go public or they want to be listed on the stock exchange or they want to raise money so that they can do the things that they want to do, they have to go to investment bankers, venture capitalists. They have to make the case for why they are better than every other horse in the race. Mm. That's it. It's, it's the story. So a lot is on the line there. I see. A lot is on the line. Yeah, that's wow. it. Okay. It's 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 billions of dollars, billions and billions of dollars, and it's people's jobs, right? These presentations are it's people's jobs and it's people's pension funds, right? Like this is it's it's a high stakes thing to make a good investor deck for people. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So I have a lot of questions for you, but maybe we should get into your very carefully crafted presentation because I'm just dying to see it. And I think there's quite a few people tuning in to see this. It got a lot of traction and engagement on Twitter. So I think there's some interest in like, what the heck does this person do? So let's let's get into it. All right. I had a quick okay. question. Now, are yeah. these presentations that you're creating, are they often shown during the investor relation calls? Is this, uh, I guess, what is the forum for these? Yeah. So... Um, I'll do ones for like annual general meetings where it's, you know, it's either a call or it's a large meeting um, where it's, you know, people saying, this is how we did. This is how our, um, this is how our company is done. This is how our drug is done. Um, Those are really cool because they're kind of like little events, right? So you get to do the event design for it. Um, The ones that I love are, and the ones that I, I get the most passionate about are the startups and the smaller companies who, you know, they have a really cool piece of science or they have um, like a really cool product and they need to raise their first round of funding. So they're usually small meetings um, with, you know, two guys and an investment banker, like about five people, about five people. Got it. So very intimate small meetings. Yep. That's where billions of dollars are exchanging hands. Yep. Mm. yep. And between yep. the person who wants the money and the person who's going to give the money stands your presentation. Yep. That's exactly. a lot riding on the line. So do you feel That's that it. pressure? Yeah. Okay. Do. 
So I, I got a ton of questions about how one does this and the whole process, but like I said, I, I think I've teased this three times now. Let's do it on the third try. Let's share your deck because I, I want to see it. <laughs> okay. Teach right. me, please. Teach you. Teach me, please. You see it? We see it. Awesome. Yeah, seven deadly sense of presentation design. So just a quick warning. I use sentence enhancers. <laughs> it's <laughs> I don't even know what that means. I'm it's, already feeling yeah, school. You're gonna hear them. You're gonna hear them. There's a parental advisory about that, right? Like, come on. Yeah, it's 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 a I'm a very no bullshit person, and the people that I work with are the exact same way. Okay. That's what you know, that's what we thrive on. Right? Mm -hmm. So a couple clients I've had a lot. They're pretty fun. They're impressive. Some of them are big, some of them are small. And this is what I love to do. I love to design investor decks. I love to design investor decks. Like I said, for small companies, you have something really cool to say and they want to say it so that they can give people jobs and they can raise money and they can help, you know, cure cancer and diagnose dementia and relieve burn victims. Like there are so many cool things out there and it's the power of this deck. This deck is what gets that market, product to market. Mm. Mm -hmm. So my process, and I think that you're going to ask me a lot about my process, right? I am. Probably will. I know you're going to. So let's get into it. Yeah. So this is what I do. Mm -hmm. This is the essence of developing a presentation for me is listening to my clients, distilling all of the information that they have because they have so much to say, right? Developing a beautiful story, designing a deck, and then delivering it and supporting them through the process of the raise. So that's what I do every single time, every deck, hands down. Mm -hmm. This man, I love him. <laughs> okay. He is like, like, he is the best representation of me. I live for Dwight Schrute and I hate him at the same time because you know what he said is this. He said PowerPoints are the peacock of the business world. All show, no meat. Oh. That's it. Right? Mm -hmm. So I have to convince people that PowerPoints are really fun and they're really cool. And I love building them. And there is a whole small sort of weird industry built around this. And we, we have the, I think I, I love my job. I am so lucky that I get to do this for myself too. You know, like I get to work for myself doing exactly what I decided that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. You know? Yeah. 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 So like for, for me, my, um, my sort of mantra around what I do is that an engaging presentation is not the end game in my job. Right. Mm -hmm. If I have an engaging presentation, that's awesome because it is going to get people an invite to a meeting. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. It's going to it's going to get people interested in the, you know, in the, the products or the company. But for me, my presentations have to empower my clients to be engaging. Okay. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. They have a story to tell. And if you make a really good presentation, it, it lets somebody be confident, right? You listen to them, you unravel like all the shit in their head. And then you just, you say it back in this like beautiful story that is, it, it, it has a clear structure, mm. right? And there are different ways to show that structure. There are different, you know, it's always tailored to that person, but a bespoke presentation empowers them. Hey, so Ashley, that, Ashley yeah. I'm sorry to, to yeah. interrupt you. I'm reading comments on YouTube and so a little bit on Facebook that there's some weird sound modulation. So while you're sharing your deck, because basically we can only see the deck, why don't you move yeah. the mic closer to your mouth? Just Sweet. Because it's it's like rising and falling. It's it's kind of strange considering you have okay. a very nice microphone. I don't know what's going on. Let's try that. <laughs> there we go. How about this? Is yeah. that better? better. Oh, oh my gosh, it's so much better. <laughs> that makes okay. a difference. But don't hurt your neck doing that. Okay, but I'm keep rocking. Okay, cool. No, as I'm long not. as you're not hurt, we're good. It's because it was like a foot away from me. It was me too and far away from your uh, mouth. Yeah, there you go. Right? Yeah. Like, I, 
I got this thing. I don't know what to do with it. Okay. It's just, I got to figure it out one day. Yeah. We'll help you with yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, I know you will. I'll make sure you do. Okay. <laughs> we'll do this again. All right. All right, let's keep going then. Okay. So how do we not screw these up? Right. Mm-hmm. First, <laughs> first sin is gluttony. Right. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is lit. That bullet point is not just a wall for thin guys. It is big and it has impact. So your clients are going to have a lot to say. And the first meeting that you have with them, it's just, it's usually like, five guys around a boardroom and you walking in, well, well, me walking in saying like, okay, what are we going to talk about? Who do we have to raise to you? Like, what are we raising? What's the story? What's, what's the end game in this? What do you want out of everything? What's the science? What, what is really cool about you? Right. What is it? Show me, mm-hmm. tell me, tell me in seven words, tell me in, you know, 10 seconds so that I can hear it. Right. Cause they're going to go into an investor presentation and that is 45 minutes of time. And this woman is an investment banker or an analyst. And she, she already knows about you. She's already done her due diligence. She, she is so smart. The, the women that I work with and the men that I work with are, Oh God, they're like, they're so smart. You know, they're like, they work with super forecasters. They work with, all sorts of different people to manage their funds. They have like 20 desks on their desk. They have meetings, like five meetings a day, just of this, right? Of people coming in saying, this is why I want you to invest in me, you know? Right. And so you have that amount of time, but it's not actually 45 minutes, right? Like it's actually, you got 10 minutes in front, you know, to do your introductions, mm-hmm. you're going to have 10 minutes in the back to, you know, have a Q and a talk to her about, you know, little details. She's going to have questions. You're going to have questions. You have to do like the goodbye. It was nice to meet you. So you got 25 minutes. Okay. Right? That's not a lot of time. So not a lot of time. Is the whole gluttony thing is like, don't try to do too much because you really only have 25 minutes and don't yeah. do like give your mm-hmm. investor the, the credit for having the intelligence to already do the research about you. They're not walking into this meeting cold, right? They're not, they're not. And this is, this is sort of like, if you understand the amount the actual amount of time that they have, mm-hmm. then it, it allows you to be more concise, you know, because that's 25 minutes. Yeah. Like that's 25 minutes to tell a person how your drug is going to diagnose cancer in a more advanced way or, you know, how you're going to prevent dementia or like how you're going to make, you know, you're going to change the blockchain or, and you still have to talk about how you're going to raise the money, you know, and how you're going to, how you're going to make her money like exponentially better, how you're going to grow it. I see. Yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, you can't do it, but I'm going to use, I love this. I love being able to say like, you have to be concise and you have to understand that, she's already, she already knows what you're doing, right? She already, she, they, they already know, they already have seen, you know, 10 of you. And so how are you going to stand above the rest and how are you going to connect with her? Right. So I use this, this uh, analogy that I learned a long time ago and I sort of tweaked it for myself, but do you know the story of the three little pigs? Of course. Everybody knows the story of the yeah, three little pigs. Okay. Yeah. So Awesome. Awesome. So if I came into you and I said, I've got this really cool story, right? Mm -hmm. This is my story. Okay. This is the story that I want to tell you. Okay. And I want to make $45 million for like, this is, this is full of jargon, right? It's got a ton of different information on it. It's like three, I got the three times rate of oxygen per puff. I got a 47% chance of huffing success. You know, my appetite's going to increase three times each time I eat a pig. And and these guys over here, they're going to like innovate by the hairs of their chinny chin chin. So this thing is loaded with jargon. It's just, it's, uh, she already knows the story. All you have to say is this, you know, Mm -hmm. that's it. That emotional connection is huge. So like, 
make it clean, make it consistent, make it really concise. And that is going to make it compelling because it's going to make you confident to tell your story. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I've never seen somebody make the three little pig stories so complicated before. I was like, what are I we know. talking about? I thought this was about right. a vapor thing. You nope. know, a vapor no, this shop. is the story okay, of the three it. little pigs. Right. I understand right? now. Uh-huh. Yeah. So Top $45 there. million dollars for three separate substrate property. I get it. Straw like sticks and bricks. three homes. Yeah. I get it. I see. Okay. I get it. All right. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and this is, you're, you're kind of exaggerating to make a point here that People who mm-hmm. don't know what they're doing tend to use jargon and bombard the viewer, the, the, the investor, the venture capitalist with too much information and they overcomplicate yeah. things. And you're saying like, yeah. get down to what the story is about, make it emotional, yeah. uh, maybe use an image or an icon or a metaphor so people understand. Yeah, it. exactly. Yeah. It's, it's the power of image and it's the power of people's experiences over what you're actually trying to say, mm-hmm. right? Do you know how hard it was for me to make this slide? <laughs> Cause this is like, it's reverse engineering what right. I do. I'll take slides like this and then I'll find the, the actual story in it and I'll turn it into this. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then it allows somebody to talk. They're having a conversation and they're not reading a slide. Mm. So I have a question for you and we're kind of dipping into process now. So if I'm yeah. you and I'm sitting across the table from five these people trying to tell me yeah. everything and too many things and giving me complicated spreadsheets and charts. What are you, what's going on in your mind that you're look? are you looking for a metaphor or something that's relatable to other people? No. So how, how do you do what I'm, what I'm looking for is I'm looking, well, I'm listening and then I'm repeating it back to them. Yeah. Right. So I'll take it, I'll process the information and then I'll try to repeat it back in like sort of like a layman's terms. Um, and this is the, the thing about experience, right? Like there's a lot that goes into an investor deck that it, it's the back end, right? It's like, how much money, what are you raising? What are your milestones? What, you know, what, what trial stages are you at? Like all that stuff. I'm looking for the problem and I'm looking for how are we going to solve it? And why are you going to solve it over everybody else? Mm-hmm. Right. That's okay. good. Okay. But it's not just, um, it's not just listening, you know, it's watching. And from that, you use these four things, right? You use the power of story and you link it to emotion. You find a really good pattern and you pound that pattern in there, right? And you use really, you use everyday language. Like I, I have lived by this and I thank the man who taught me this a long time ago, just to keep it clean and keep it simple and just say it like it you're their neighbor, right? That's it. It's, it's, if you can say that, then you're going to, you're going to be so much more compelling mm. and people are going to want to mm. listen to you. Okay. You know? All right. Okay. Yeah. And you said something that, that kind of intrigued me. Uh, normally I tell people be a really good listener. And then you, you said something about like you, you observe and you watch, what are you looking for? Yeah. So I'm looking into the next ones, right? Okay. I'm looking into the next sin, which the next sin is envy. And there's kind of two sides of the coin to this one, envy and lust I put together. Um, so envy is when somebody, they see that, you know, they see it, it, This is why envy and lust are together. It's because they, they see a guy like Steve Jobs or they see Musk or they, they see, they watch other presentations and they think I have to do it just like them, mm-hmm. you know? I have to be the paradigm shift, the paradigm shift. And I have to, you know, I have to be just like, I have to emulate this person because that's the presentation style that is, is going to win me, you know, it's going to win me the gold. And I think that everybody um, wants to communicate and we all have our own style. Right. So if I can do my job well, I can make them confident enough to do it in their style. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like lust. It's the same thing. It's, 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 (laughs) I know, I know. I love it. I just, (laughs) this, this for me is like, when I watch, when I say I'm watching, I'm watching um, and I'm listening to the inflection in their voice. Right. Or I'm watching when they get excited, you know, I'm watching like, if they say like, we're going to be able to like cure 45% of this illness, 
they get really like they get in there right and they they you can see like they they get flush and they just like they know what they're talking about and their voice speeds up and they get excited so you know that that's something that's really they're really passionate about and you can take that and and you know bring that out of them through what you're making with them great yeah that's what you're watching yeah. for okay that's what I'm watching for. You're looking for them yeah, to get excited I, so that you know kind of where the passion is. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think that every every designer, when you're listening, you should be not just listening to the, the words coming out of their mouth. You should be listening to how they're saying it. Right. Because that's 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 sort of like the, the body language thing. Right. It's it's the body language and the inflection and that that allows that you to get just as excited as them and then figure out like, you know, the nice, the nice places that you can, can sort of work around. And then you can see like places that you have to build up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But like a last as well is as, as presentation designers, our job is not and, and in design all around, right. Our job is not to design in our image. You know, this, everybody knows this. It's, it's, it's to empower them to do what they love, you know, mm -hmm. And so, like Patrick Swayze, I idolized that. He was, he was beautiful. <laughs> Damn. But when I watched this, yeah, I'm watching Patrick Swayze gyrate a little bit, but like Chris Farley is over there emulating him and the personality that, and the confidence that comes out of him. Mm -hmm. I just, I live for it. I love it. Yeah. So you're saying to your client, you don't need to be Patrick Swayze. <clears throat> you could be Chris Farley. You could shake it. Yeah. You can love it. You can rub it. And people are going to fall in love with your personality exactly. and who you are. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. And for like the designers out there and the presenters, listen and be genuine and be honest, right? Lust, lust and envy can do a lot of things. They can drive people to take information from other decks, right? If you've got a cannabis company, there are like hundreds of other cannabis companies, but don't take information from their decks and put it into one because that just sort of, it, 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 it's, it's the, just make it, make it for them, make it for their information and their story. And don't leave them, you know, sort of open to saying, well, that information, you know, that, that rates from this person, like, why are you stealing that? You know, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. Sloth. Don't rely on online <laughs> templates, guys. Don't do it. Don't rely on, on online templates because they are they're they're made for documents. When you break one open, the masters aren't there. They're made for documents, and yes, they're beautiful. But I think really good, really good presentation designers. We design each presentation. That's it. We make we make I make tons of of decks where we have to make 12 of the same deck, right? Or we have to, we have to make a deck for, you know, an, a mutual fund company. So we have to make like, you know, one for each fund. So you make it consistent and you make sure your masters are tight, right? That's the rule. Mm. Bespoke presentations always have clean masters. You know, don't be, don't rely on the PowerPoint as your crutch, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. It's, it's also like, don't start designing a presentation in PowerPoint because that's, that's not, that's not the story. You know, my, my office is filled with post-it notes and index cards and I get like paper from Japan because it's, it's sort of sized. I found it in a store and I saw it and I was like, that's a 16 to nine slide. I'm going to buy like 10 of those. So now I go around to like spend tons of money on this freaking paper because it's like, oh, it's the size of a slide and I love it. And the people look at me like I'm like fucking weird. <laughs> but <laughs> Are these yeah. like uh, cut down like smaller sizes or are they like full sheets? Do you have a piece They're in front full. of you? I, I, have, I have full sheets. Okay, I have I four by six index cards. Yeah. I have post-it notes. I see. Yeah. All different sizes. Mm -hmm. You know, I take the index cards when I go on vacation because I know that I'm going to draw a slide on the beach. Yeah. I like, yeah. personally, I like three by five cards because they're pretty small and they can fit in your pocket. And I like mm -hmm. using a Sharpie because it forces you 
you can't write that much with a Sharpie to kind of focus in on what the idea is. You can't use too many words. Yeah. And then you can shuffle exactly. the cards around. You can easily get rid of one so you don't become too attached to an idea. And you can just keep working with this. You could be on the bus, a plane. You could be at lunch, whatever. You could be working on Anywhere. the ideas. Yeah. And if you if you take a look at it and you put it on a wall, right, and mm-hmm. you, you look at the slides, it, you're not locked into that, like, layout mode in PowerPoint right. or, you know, where – you are, oh shit, I got to like, you you see five and then you see another five. You can sort of move it around and you can take a look at it like the foundation of a house, right? Mm -hmm. You can say, okay, I want this part to move sideways. And then I want this part to move down. Like the flow of how you design a presentation is so cool because it's, it's like a, I, I take a lot of inspiration from movie titles you know, I watch how they're made and I watch like how they bring like sound and emotion in. And so sometimes I'll have like different songs on just to sort of get me into the mood of like what these guys are doing so that I can lock myself away (laughs) and figure out the flow, you know? Yeah. 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 It's, it's fun. It's fun. And yeah, it's fun. So wrath. <laughs> what is this? It's a wet cat. Okay. It's an angry wet cat. <laughs> not it's your not. Cat, my, right? It's not my cat. No, my cat's back behind me. He's asleep. Yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't let me bathe him. No. But it's about staying calm under pressure, and not getting angry because you have to design something in you know, in a constraint, and the constraint is PowerPoint. Um. In this area, in this space, the majority of presentations are designed in PowerPoint. Now, we won't hold that against you because I I prefer Keynote, but basically... You do prefer prefer Keynote, but guess what? Half the people on Bay Street or Wall Street don't have a, you know, they don't use Keynote. I know. So, text, text, they're going to ask you for PowerPoints because all their tech information... Yeah, exactly. We know. Right? Yeah. So, what we have to do is usually convert the Keynotes into PowerPoint and then we have to fix it because it doesn't convert cleanly. Yeah. Yeah. If if you want to be a serious presentation designer, you need to know PowerPoint up and down. Like, I can... I, I love being able to bust through a PowerPoint and you can break them apart there's code in there. There's, mm. there's all sorts of really cool things that you can do in there and you can make things look just as good. You know, you really can. Can you, I'll show you. Well, can you yeah. give me it's an example? End. Okay. Cause it's at the I, end. I, I, I'm a diehard Apple boy. Right. So it's like, Ooh, you Microsoft. All right. So you're, you just kind of, you just shot a, uh, yeah. a shot across the I bow did. there and you'll tell me later I why, did. right? You'll school me later. I will. All right. I will. Yeah. Okay, I'm and it's, forward it's to being not schooled. for you. It's not for you. Okay. Right. It's not for you. That's the thing. It's, and it goes into greed. This is not about you. And there's a lot of risk in this, right? This job is not easy. And the people who, who are really good at it, we are, we're like a combination We're we're copywriting and we're strategizing and we have to be able to, to sit and sit with a, a boardroom of, you know, lawyers and bankers and capital markets guys and hold our own, you know, because it doesn't matter that, you know, you've seen three presentations. I've seen like over a thousand of them, you know, and those people that you're going to go talk to, they've seen even more. Right. So it's just, okay. If it, it, I know that it takes, it, it seems like there's a lot that can be like, done in here but like it takes a lot of a lot of work to be able to charge the rates that we charge Mm -hmm. you know so you can't get yeah you can't get greedy and think i'm gonna charge this amount of money because decks are easy they're not easy you know Mm -hmm, they're not mm -hmm. yeah yeah and and like i said there's a lot of risk like if you put the wrong information in and the stock price goes down from like a buck twenty to forty cents. Like, is that on you? You know, like it's it's if they don't meet their raise because you know this you designed it in InDesign and they had to change information on the fly and they couldn't do it. They lost their confidence, right? right. They lost their deal. Right. Yeah, that's it. It's it's there's a lot of humility in this job because like yeah you're never the smartest person in the room. 
but you have to make sense of what they're saying and then fit it, help, help to fit it into 25 minutes. Just help, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. It's also about this presentation day is presentation day is not the deadline for us because your client needs to rehearse. They really need to rehearse. So we, it's like a week away. I right? see. Yeah. Yeah. And do you, Can't be greedy. Do you, do you do the presentation for them with them? You coach them through that? You listen to how they present or your responsibilities? Some, where, where does this begin? Some clients end? I do. Okay. So I've got some clients who we work really closely together mm-hmm. and yeah, I, I love that. Like, I love the clients like that because it's, we're in like from the, the ground, like the ground floor. Mm-hmm. Right. I get to, to sit in and see like, okay, this is what we're building and this is what we're doing. And, you know, you, you get to really see the story form. Mm-hmm. Um, other places, other people, I know amazing presentation coaches um, that we can call on and say, okay, this is, this is who we want you to see. Um, go see them. Mm-hmm. So you this know, is talk the, to them. this is the story deck coupled with imagery and you may partner up with a coach, a presentation coach, and have them rehearse and practice with them so that they can get the, the verbal and emotional yeah. part done, right? Yeah. Okay. You, you may not have the time. You mm-hmm. may not, you, 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 they may not want you to, right? It's, it's, you just, you do what you can to help them out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Pride. Mm. So to be a really good presentation designer, you have to get used to some things. Okay, this is this is the peacock. You have to understand that your best work is going to always hide under an NDA. That's it. Okay. That is a huge one. Your greatest work isn't going to be shown. Um, you're well, you're not going to be able to show it. That's the thing, right? You're you're going to be able to take a, a deck and put zeros into areas, or you know, like try to show that same story. It's, it's not the same. So I've got tons of work that I can never show, right? And I have to be okay with that. Right. But I have to be just as passionate about those jobs as all the other ones, right? Like, yeah, TED Talks go online and they're you know, shown and I love them. I, I like ugh, Nancy Dwart is the queen of TED Talks. I like that woman is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I am totally fine because I'm so passionate about investor presentations that I'm fine with this. And you need to be fine with it too. Mm-hmm. So you don't do TED Talk mm-hmm. decks? I would, I would love to do them. Like I'd love to do, you know, more than just like TEDx Canada. <laughs> I'd love to. <laughs> yeah, I really would. Yeah. Um, this is just, this is where I've fallen mm-hmm. is investor presentations are the majority of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I got another question for you in terms of price. Now, I told you before I was charging $10,000 and without revealing how much you charge, I'm just letting people know it's in multitudes of that in terms of what Ashley is charging. What's the, what's the range in terms of if you actually learn how to craft stories and do what it is that you're doing, we're not talking about learning the mechanics yeah. of doing a, a, a deck. How much mm-hmm. can somebody expect to make? Can you give us a ballpark range just so that people who are tuning into this have an idea? Uh, you can make a, a lot of money. You can make a lot of money. I, I've i seen presentations that are not just, it's not just a one-man firm, right? Which is where I would, you know. Right. They're they're paying like $100,000 for a deck. Wow. But that's not just a deck, guys. It's not just a deck. It's the support it's the, yeah, it's the, you know, the reviews, it's the, you know, <laughs> did I just hear the little yeah. shake? Yeah. It took yeah. me a little while to find yeah. it on the, on the sound yeah. machine over here. I apologize, yeah. guys. I'm a little yeah, late it's, on the the, it's the support. It's like, it's, you have, you're up like an IPO deck. You were up at 5 p or 5 a.m. waiting for lawyers to give you changes. Yeah. Right. You lose yourself. Right. Yeah. It is. It's, it's, you don't just abandon the the deck and go okay it's Mm -hmm. done it looks beautiful Mm. it is like okay lawyers are going to come back and give you tons of changes and you know ias are going to come in and they're going to say well i think it should be like this or bankers are going to give you different things like that there's a lot on the line for those right right hundreds of millions of dollars right? hundreds of millions of dollars yeah the value is there okay we as present we as presentation designers Mm -hmm. are helping raise billions of dollars like i said 
And the value in that clean story is where our value comes from. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So you can make from a few thousand dollars to hundreds of thousands potentially, and there's a mm -hmm. wide gamut here. So I have a question for you. When a client yeah. comes to you, they're, they're doing an investor deck, like in the, the capital market space that you're in, how mm -hmm. do you determine the price? Is it a flat fee or do you try to negotiate for a percentage of the money being raised? I'm curious. Um, so I have a few tiers of different kinds that I'll do. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on how much involvement there is, right? Are we busting it down? Yeah. Are we going in? Are we just doing a scrub? Do you already have it done? Mm -hmm. Do you just want it to look a little prettier? Um, do you want your information to be designed differently? Mm -hmm. Are we working with, so the tech guys that I work with, we do amazing things. If anybody wants to like push the limits and not just do a, you know, standard 16 and nine screen, we have such cool things. Like we have, um, tech from one of the guys that I work with where you can control a large screen with a wand so you can throw information like live information up as you're going and it's it's it, you're you're where you stand on stage shows where the the presentation is going to go you know like there are such cool things you can do short like this is this is where the cool shit is you can do short throws you can do like um we're doing like ipad apps as decks like you can do all sorts of cool shit and the more deep you get into the cool shit that's where the price goes up as well as you know, what it's for, like a small company coming in to do like a small raise. I'm kind of like Draplin where if, if you've got a really cool idea and I love it and I'm in with you, then I, it's, it's hard for me to resist, you know, you'll do it for a burrito. <laughs> I won't do it for a burrito. <laughs> I have a, no, I have a minimum. I have a minimum. <laughs> Well, that's right? how Droplin does it. So what's the Canadian yeah. version of the I have, I, have, I have a minimum engagement, but it's it's hard not to want to just like give them all the cool tech. But right. yeah, it's it's like the, um, like you get into stage design, right? Yeah. You get into event design. Like mm -hmm. this job allowed me to take a, a good chunk of time off and design like do a volunteer i took almost a year off and did the volunteer work for um pride toronto like way back when it was 10 years ago um and i was able to do all of the creative direction for like one of the largest pride festivals in the world so i powerpointed a little bit and i did this and i got to see like the the underrunnings of a large festival which empowered me to be able to do my job better mm -hmm. yeah yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Mm -hmm. um, can we? So, some people want to see your face. <laughs> well, Ashley has to control that, <laughs> control, so yeah, she exactly. has to switch back and forth, and it's yeah. it's not the easiest thing to do, but she can yeah, do it if she wants to. I can. So what we'll do is this, Ashley. The, the rule will yeah. be: if you've got a slide for up for more than five seconds, go ahead and stop to share and cut back to your okay. camera. Okay. Cool. So you control yeah. that. Live too. stream, guys. This yeah. is my first one. I am like, I'm not great. used to this. She, yeah. She's a first timer, yeah. guys. Just relax yeah. a little bit, all right? Yeah. But it's good right. information. Let's, let's, let's keep rocking and rolling. Let's all right, go. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Doe. We're going to do this. All right. InDesign PowerPoint keynote. What do you think this is made in? Imagine a world where Alexa debates. Glad well. Glad so, this is a slide that these two slides are for somebody who was like, we want to rethink how we communicate the. Uh, you know, the danger and the potential of artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. right? So I got to design a full, like a concept event for them and say, what if you did this? Like, what if this was possible? You know, this is what artificial intelligence is going to do for us. Like Alexa could debate Malcolm Gladwell. If this is like, could you imagine? Mm -hmm. could you imagine? Can you imagine the day where Alexa debates the guy who invented the internet? Like, come on. But PowerPoint to keynote. Or a design. You, you can't do you tell. Think? A design is a design. Yeah. You could have PowerPoint. done it in Photoshop. Yep. Yeah. PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. PowerPoint. This could have been a table, but it doesn't have to be. Right? You can have like, oh, it's 72. Like, this is what we have and this is where we're going. Um, just written out in a table, or you can show them, right? You can show them we're starting down here and we're going to go up there. Like, hey, I gotta, wait, wait, can you come back to, I have a question for you. 
yeah. are the sizes of the circles relative to the number? They could be. The circles change all the time, mm. right? Those numbers are always going to be changing. Okay. You have to make sure. This is the thing. Do it in PowerPoint because these guys are going to change them. So your job is to like make sure they're supported and they're not going to fuck up. But I don't think they are. Right. So it's a it's a relative scale to kind of show you the concept, not to say that. Yeah. The 27 exactly. million is that much bigger than the 72. Exactly. 000. The bigger information in this mm -hmm. is like right now we're at $72,000. Guess what? Four years away. Look how big that is. Yeah. That's it. It's that visceral hey, reaction. Are you looking at the future spreadsheet in our projections? What? I was just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> is that our revenue projection? That's our revenue projection. We're in the yellow bubble, yeah. guys. Come on. Is nice. But like this, right? This is an example of a, this could have been a bar graph, but instead we mirrored this to the mountain that these guys are drilling into, right? It's just a little bit of visual pleasure that helps you along, mm -hmm. you know? This is getting into yeah. information graphics that you're doing there. Yeah. Making like it's, it's, it's cool. Like making that, the data that, pretty and relevant. Exactly. And exactly. Making these things, make, putting it in context, putting what you're saying into like real context. So like you get to fucking Photoshop, like you're not just playing in PowerPoint. I love it because you get to play in everything, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, Somebody on YouTube is saying, Ashley speaks so boldly, dropping some bombs in there too. <laughs> yeah, like this is a simple slide. Mm -hmm. This is the simple slide. The information is laid bare. That's what it is. Like mm -hmm. that's it. You know, you see this growth. It's a visual, like it's a visual representation of this cool opportunity. You know, that's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. You can talk about this. A, you know, he can go in and he can say this. He can talk, and it's not. It's not distracting from him. You know. Yes. That's it. You get to do beautiful things. Like you get to take slides and then you get to like work them into, you know, this, this is one that I did for like another conceptual event thing for another, a very large, um, like one of the big three kind of consulting firms. Mm -hmm. Management consulting firms. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, 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 like, can you imagine if you had this an event and the, like everything was moving? You get to do this, right? I can imagine they, see, it. they see the concepts. They yeah. you feel like you can tell. You know, I was listening to classical music when I made this entire concept because that is what you need. Like, you need to have inspiration outside of that. Mm -hmm. like, so I got a couple slides. questions. I got a couple yeah. questions. Back to that slide, please. So yeah. is this stock photography? Is this commission photography? Where are you sourcing your images? And then I have some other questions after that. So this is a blend of stock and um, just custom stuff, right? right. So the, the actual base photo is a stock photo. Mm -hmm. It's not a cheap stock photo, mm -hmm. but it's okay. Let's, the thing that I took when I did this at first is we thought about like, okay, What's the, the main thing that we want to display? We looked at like the idea of music, right? Mm -hmm. And harmonizing as a team. So I thought, oh, you know what I love? I love sound waves. So what if I had sound waves travel through this entire event? What if I make that sound wave the main focus in this entire concept through my mm -hmm. creative? Mm -hmm. So the sound waves travel through, right? Yeah. I started looking for like just these like stunning images of like people who are, you know, dancing and playing by themselves because this is the thing we don't want to, they didn't want to play by themselves anymore. They wanted to really like converge all of this, all, everybody together so that they weren't just like, you know, sort of playing like they were by themselves. I don't need to, to work with you. I don't need to work with you. You're, you're, I'm better than you. Oh, Right. Like, and, and this is the, the results. Like mm -hmm. you find one tiny piece of like her shoes, even like the detail in taking her shoes and making them like the, the brand color that you've come up with for your event. Like it, it just one hit, right. 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 It, it points it out. Right. Right. Play with the type. This slide is actually layered. So it's layered where the woman and the, um, so she's a transparency. The sound waves are a transparent, like a transparent EPS. Mm -hmm. He is 
transparent, like he's, he's his own layer, right? And then everything is layered on so that when you bring it into PowerPoint, you can animate it. You can do things with it, right? You're not like locked into an image. Mm -hmm. So do you have to take the original stock image, recolorize it, and then separate each layer apart and then bring it back in and reconstruct it, right? Yeah. So yep. then, then you can exactly. animate. So if they yeah. wanted to, see how the, the word amplify sits behind the ballerina? That, that type could change if they wanted to change that. And yeah. the sound waves could be animated as an animated piece or you could animate it mm -hmm. through PowerPoint. That's Yeah, yeah. I, I you can do... take it into After Effects and you mm -hmm. can animate it in there and then you can bring it in as a movie. Now, how often do yeah. you do that? I I do these on, I do them rarely. I mm -hmm. love doing them. Yeah. I love it. If anybody out there needs like, has a really cool event that you want to do, you call this lady. <laughs> <laughs> you're these not are at, labors. Wait, wait, hold on. Like, this, yeah. You're not pointing at me when you say call this lady, right? You're no, talking no, about no, no, no. Call you. I'm pointing at myself. Just, pointing at myself. You're my, not calling me lady. Cat. Okay, I just want to make sure. Now, <laughs> I, I do want to come, come back to the slide and talk about this in that if you have 25 minutes to make your point, that means every mm -hmm. word, every graphic, every data point that you put in there, every image has to be very considered and intentional. That's yep. why you can't just grab some crap stock image and just drop it in and just slop on a, a line in there because you've wasted that moment. So you might exactly. labor on these, these slides way more than you think. So the process yep. is first find the story. What, what is going to matter to the investor? What, what are they passionate about? And then find the appropriate ways to tell that story and structure in a way that drives an emotional connection. And then find mm -hmm. the images that amplify that and put it all together. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Let's keep going. Don't don't worry about slide numbers. Worry about the story. Okay. Right? Yeah. Like this is one that I you love know, this like one. this is the same kind of thing. Yeah. It's the same kind of thing. It's like layering, guys. It's same, layering. Same, uh, same deck? No, different, different deck. deck. Okay. Yeah. Can you park on yeah. that, uh, that deck for, or this that frame? One. I love this the is, yeah. integration of the topography, the how it's hidden underneath the are those shipping containers? Yeah. Yeah. And then but, like, the little hits of color and graphics kind of this could be a transition uh, interstitial graphic for a CNN breaking story, the next mile. And I can exactly. see it totally animated but and flickering on. This is the on. thing. Good teams, you don't just like do that. Like, here's another sample. This is like, guess what year I did this in? I want to end this because I want to have a conversation with you. Okay. Right? We've gone through mm -hmm. so many. Guess what year these were done in? Uh, guess how old these slides are other than the 40. They're, no, they're like, they're 12 <laughs> years old. Like, <laughs> But this is it. It's like this has been a key for so long. It's just like clear information, guys. But like these, a long time ago, we were like, before all these, we were hacking in like Photoshop and like bringing in all sorts of like shadows and like zooms and like, oh, let's like make the slide numbers like little, you know, shopping carts and stuff. <laughs> so clever. So, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like these numbers. are like, like, yeah, exactly. Like this is like when you're selling CDs. Like we've been doing this for as long as like people have been selling CDs. You know, like it's 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 so much fun. Some of our this audience are scratching their head. What are CDs? <laughs> <laughs> you know, pre MP3 guys, come on, get with it. Pre MP3. All right, so we're stopping yeah. the share. Shop we're gonna have a combo. The okay, okay. Yeah. We got a bunch of questions yes. for for you, and I, I have let's let's open it up to the the community. I saw that somebody wrote in there. It's just some really basic things. So let's try to get through as much of the questions that our audience has has been having on Facebook and on YouTube. One of the questions was, how do you deal with fonts? Being that you have to turn the deck over, are you limited to fonts? How do you handle that? Um, and usually I'll make sure that the font is something that they're used to. So it's Arial Helvetica. Helvetica is great. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's got to be a system font unless you know exactly where they're going and exactly what computer they're on. Yeah. Um, they, if we're doing PDF decks, because we'll do interactive PDFs, mm -hmm. that gives us more freedom. Um, it depends. But if you're sending somebody off to do like a standard PowerPoint, try to stick within the constraints system of, fonts. you know, system fonts. Yeah. yeah. And it's a constraint. You Helvetica, you're good. Yeah. You're good. It's a constraint. Yeah. Do it. There's yeah. another easier solution too. I mean, maybe you'll tell me no. You just buy the font for the client. You give it to them. Yeah. They can install it on but the machine. What if they go to a conference and they want to have the deck put on their own? So the techs want to have it on their own computer. Turn it to PDF. 
but you're designing for a very specific use. Like you said, yeah. it's basically two what people on one side of the room, right? And one person on the other side of the room and you're going to raise a couple hundred million dollars. So it's mm -hmm. very purpose built. So if you were going to do a TED talk mm -hmm. and there's certain requirements for that, then you would do it differently. Like you said, if you convert it to PDF, no problem, but then you lose all your notes or the other things, yeah. right? Exactly. And okay. it's, 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 if you convert it. So mm -hmm. I, I watched your RGD Ontario, your, your RGD design thinkers one. You right? did? Yeah, I did. I watched it. I, I got like, I can watch them online because I'm part of the RGD. Oh, I didn't even yeah. know that it was yeah. taped. Yeah. So it's taped. Exactly. Oh so goodness. here's the thing. Okay. Do you want to hear? Yeah. I'm going to call you out a little I'm bit. I'm almost scared. <laughs> call me so out, girl. So I know that you Get ready to hit the mute button. <laughs> this is one of, one I know that you Go animated ahead. a slide, buddy. I know you animated a slide because you were talking and I could sense that the animation was happening. But for me, because it was a PDF um, piece, I didn't see that animation. So Aww. me as a presentation designer, I would have asked, is this conference being um, like webcast, you know, separately so they have a separate screen? Because yeah. then you know to design that information with those in mind. Yeah, yeah, right? okay, yes. Then, yeah. You're actually yeah. not calling me out. Believe it or not, no. actually, actually, look at me in the eye right now when I'm about to argue with you. <laughs> Wait, like right in the I don't lens. See you. I just see a lot. I, I know, I know, but you just need to yeah. look into your camera. Our audience will see because your eyes are wandering all over the place. So let me just tell you yeah. this: this is a failure on RGD, not me, because they didn't have me sign a contract <laughs> saying, "Do we have the right to use this?" So anytime I could say, "Take that off," I didn't even know. It's it's a surprise to me that actually that was filmed. See, so I give a presentation. You have to actually get my consent in writing to be able to to do that. So, so the, the onus is on them, not on me. Okay. Just saying, just saying. Well, let's, let's, I, I will apologize <laughs> now. I'm going to be like, please don't take away my membership. Don't take it away. Please I'm calling know. the president right don't after this. Hillary, How dare you? Do not, no, 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 no. I'll call her quicker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Uh, so we, we took care of the font issue. Here's the big one. Do you do the research yourself? Like when you're talking about industries like medical devices and things that you don't know anything about, how are yeah. you able to distill this into something? Are you, do you have to do research? Is there a team? How are you doing this? So I'm, okay, so this is part of the thing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Good presentation designers, good people who de develop these decks. We are researching all the time. We read the financial post. I don't read a lot, as, as many design books as I should. I read like, I read Wired. I read about, you know, cannabis tech. I read about like, you Emerging know, you technology. You're on the bleeding edge. I get it. You read about like, you read about cancer. You read about, you get, I, I took a job as the marketing director for a mutual, a small mutual fund company so that I could learn financial compliance. Like that's the kind wow. of stuff you have to know. Yeah. And that's it, right? With these decks, the detail in them is you, me as like a high end, like this is, this is how deep I go mm -hmm. is that my clients, I don't know when to call them and say, okay, we need to update your deck because it's not compliant anymore because of the regulations in the area that you're living. Like those are the things that we bear in mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm researching constantly. Okay. I'm, I'm an ADD person. Like I, this is the variety and the small hits of information. I thrive on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why don't we turn it over to Mark, who's been watching the feed on Facebook and on YouTube. Mark, yes. what's, what's a good question that people have been asking? Yeah, well, just generally speaking, a lot of people are fired up. You got designers thinking that they have new opportunities. I saw that. Uh, to do so. I think that's great that the community is really... You know like, what they smell, Mark? This. Amazing. You know what they smell? They smell this. The money. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, well, one of the questions here is, how often are you in these meetings? And then if you're not, um, what's the process of training the person that is presenting? Mm, good question. Good one. Good one, Internet. Mm. It is good. Go ahead, Ashley. So how often am I in an investor meeting with them? Yes. Never. So. No. Never. 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 No. Never, never. no. Oh, okay. I send them on my way unless it's like if it's um, if it's an AGM, we're there. We're in the back. If it's um, a large, you know, a large gathering, then we're there, you know, mm -hmm. managing managing things. And then I'll always be sort of making sure that the deck looks good watching how they're presenting, but it's, it's when you review the deck with yeah, them, yeah. right? When you form it, those are the times that you get to sit with them and explain, like, this is why I chose this information here. And this is why we're doing this here. What do you think? Like, how does this, how does this resonate with you? Right. It mm -hmm. has to resonate with them. And then you, if you've done your job well, 
that confident boot uh, confidence boosts up and their CEOs, the egos that are in this room are huge already in great ways. So you just need to like, you know, send them on their way. Yeah. Empower, let them go. Let them like do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But to know how to do that took a long time. It took okay. a long time. All right. I got to say something on behalf of Mark Ruff. He says, her eyes look so brave and she looks so ravishingly gorgeous. <laughs> I don't think he said it that way in the text window, but I was just like, she's like, excuse me. I don't know. <laughs> move my hair around a little bit. All right, I'm just I letting you know. So a little love there, okay. I got another question. How, how often do these presentations usually take to do? Oh, good one, good one. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, so we, I think about like how long it has taken some. Um, never, it's, there's never a one month timeline. I never really get that. Um, sometimes I will, usually it's like two weeks. Um, I once designed a 74 slide PowerPoint in 48 hours. Wow. That was fun. Wowza. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've done them in a day. Um, I've done them in a week. I've done them over two months. It depends, but you're never, it's usually about like one to two weeks because they already have the, the plan. They've already got their their tickets booked, mm -hmm. right? They're they're ready to go. So, right. yeah. How are we gonna say it? We got to raise the money now. Uh, yeah. I've got a I've got a question. Uh, how long does the review take uh, when you're going over the slides with them? Mm. Like the meeting or the yeah when when you actually go to review you said you you have to review it with them uh how mm -hmm. long does that take when you're like i i chose this for this reason and going mm -hmm. through that through you that take longer them. now it takes for me to to walk somebody through through their deck um we've already had so many conversations before we actually go through the completed deck that it's usually about an hour so, but that's because we had a three hour meeting in the beginning and we talked to them, we showed them the information laid bare when we did the presentation, right? It's the same way that you teach how to do, um, you know, just general identity design. You know, you do the strategy and you do the style. You do the same thing. Like you show the information and you show the story and then you show the, the way it looks and you bring, bring them together. So by the time they've got their final deck there, like they're good to go and they know what they're going to say. Mm. Yeah, we did have a couple of questions around that process. You know, you, you talk about building the narrative and that's very important um, versus how many slides you have in a deck. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the process of building that story with the client? Mm. There's no one way to do it. There's, it's, it's not a prescriptive way for me. Mm -hmm. um, it's because it, every single, every single story is different, right? There are, um, I have my own templates that I have built over time. Um, and I'm going to try to release something that allows and helps other designers do this a little mm -hmm. better. Um, eventually, if I can <laughs> get the time to do it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, there are many different sort of um, opinions on the different structures, right? The different structure of strategy and flow and like you raise them up and then you bring them down and then you raise them up. But one, one like a, a pharmaceutical deck is a different structure than a mining deck, right? Right. Where a financial deck is different than a raised deck. Yeah. So it's, it's, those first meetings and that first amount of research, those are the really big pieces that show you how to make that narrative. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Make sense? Yes. So I got a bunch of more questions for you here. Um, if I want to get started in doing what it is that you do, what are some resources mm -hmm. or, or things that you send me down a direction to help me out? I want to get started. And if I'm already in this space, how does one go about procuring clients like these investment bankers and people that are in the capital capital market space that you're talking about? Good question. So it's major the, the way that I get my clients is majority word of mouth up until now, right? It's um, get partnerships, make, do, do something for um, like a really good, find, find a, a VC firm, right? And say, like, 
if you if you're really good at, at doing one deck, they're gonna be like, hey, I've got another story. This girl, like she does it really well. Let's send them to her, right? That 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 rolling snowball effect, it's really powerful. So do like that, that's sort of it. You have to get your foot in. I know it's hard to get your foot in the door for like your first couple of clients. Um, and I really don't, I, I don't remember like how I did it. Get, get in, I, I got in with the capital markets firm. I was really lucky, right? I learned from the best guys. Like, and, and that was, that was awesome because then as people left that firm, they would come to me and they'd say, Hey, we, I've got a client. They need a deck. Do you have time? I'm like, okay. Yeah. And then that person would be like, Hey, we've got, we know people who have need a deck. Right. So my, my, I love partnering with venture capital, but venture capital firms because they're always getting people in wanting to raise money and they, they know what, if their story isn't good enough, they can, we'll work together. Mm. So you have an infinite supply of clients because there's always somebody trying to launch the next breakthrough product medical procedure, right? I hope so. I think so. I, hope. I mean, yeah. it'll be a sad I, I, day I, if there's no more innovation. Yeah. And, and I think that um, I, I can see, I, I've been wondering, like, is automation going to happen for this? But it, automation can only go so far to connect with other humans. I don't, I don't think so. There's yeah. too many complicated things here. Okay. So look. I, I got a couple of things to point out here. You mentioned this person's name before. Look, if you want to get a start in this thing, I would recommend you talk to the giant that's in the presentation design industry, which is Nancy Duarte. You can look up her TED Talk, start there. She's written a book called Slideology, and hopefully Ashley will be writing a book or a, a kit or a course or something see. like that, and then you can learn yeah. from her. Okay, yeah. so that's that's how you would do it. You start. See, here's the thing that I, I kind of sometimes I, I try to temper my reaction to these kinds of questions because if you want to get us started in anything, all you have to do is type it into Google, and it, it just it irritates me sometimes that people are they they have this big dream that they want to accomplish, they want to learn something, but they're just so freaking lazy to even try to type it in. If you type in presentation design, I wonder what you're going to come up with. Or TED, Powerful Presentations. And then she mentioned Nancy Duarte, and it's spelled D-U-A-R-T-E. She's authored several books. I have them all, and you can get into that. Hearing potentially... Nancy just fed, like, a whole bunch of business to her. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I wanted somebody to do it, just so you know. And, I, and here's the thing. When I, I started doing research for this show, right? I don't want to come in here flat-footed and not know anything about it. But it, it blew my mind that she has like a hundred people working for her. And I know. that's a good place to start. Do an internship. I know. Get your foot in the freaking door. Mm -hmm. Have a skill that is is marketable so that they'll bring you in. Maybe they just need you to design the graphs for a little while. Or maybe you're a really yeah. good writer and you have a you're like a wordsmith. That's your entry. And it's kind of yeah. shocking to me that you're an industrial designer classically trained and you made this transition. If you want something, you will find a way. Right. So it's yeah, it's that's it. Right. The thing that I learned the most from that is that there's always a problem that needs to be solved. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. what product design is. Right. Yes. And okay. It's, it's translated. over. Uh, yeah. I, I want to ask you this because it's coming up here. I, this wasn't meant to be a XYZ show. This is a Ashley Smithers show. 1821. Yeah. What is up with the yes. name 1821? Can you can you tell us the significance of that, please? Uh, yeah, it's my birth time. That's why oh. that's how I came up with it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, done. Yeah. 621. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I thought about changing it because I get it a lot. Like, what the fuck is 1821? And right. It's like, what time, happened in 1821? Yeah. Like, I, you know, like I've had, like, I've had little companies on the side yeah. that we named different things. And I always come back to this because that's where I, I, I'm the happiest. So I'm rolling with it. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's the thing, mm -hmm. too. If you want to be a really good presentation designer, um, like, uh, that's it. It, it, it. It's so hard to get designers to realize that PowerPoint is not, a, you know, it's not evil. It's not awful. It's just another software, right? If you can master it, come see me. Okay. Yeah. If, if you're you in know Toronto. how to make <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you're in Toronto and you know how to design PowerPoint, like, or you want to learn, if you want to learn, mm -hmm. come and see me. 
Okay. Come talk to me. Well, let's talk about your studio a little bit here. You've been in business for yeah. 15 years. And <laughs> how many people are there? Is it just you? Uh, tell me about your company structure. Please. Yeah. So I am mostly a, a one woman show, mm -hmm. um, except that I have like a network of people that I call on. Um, I have an amazing presentation designer who just, we crush it together, right? Because we know how we, we, we sort of think along the same lines. And so um, she's like, she's out in South Africa or something right now, right? Mm -hmm. So I always, I push, I push things to her because I know that wow. like I've done the story and then she can just like run with my concept. Mm -hmm. um, and then I wake up in the morning and it's done. Like she's, she's done all the, like the, the grunt work. Mm -hmm. um, and we just, we can do that. I, I have like, I've, I've had amazing designers, you know, I, I have them in my back pocket to call on. I have copywriters, but I really like, I, I do most of it myself. Like for Dax. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you yeah. looking to, to grow your practice? I am looking to grow. Yeah. Very sort of slowly. I would like to be like Dwart covered in maple syrup. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's, that's kind of like, that's it. I, but there's, I, I, yeah, I want to grow. That's, that's why I'm coming to you though. <laughs> That's why I'm coming to you. Welcome to the dojo. Yeah. Welcome no, we'll, 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 we'll work on that. Uh, I, I yeah. see the whole time we were talking, you had this very happy, confident, bold, just super awesome face on. As soon as I asked you if you want to grow, the eyebrows began to furl together. The, the, it's just like I saw a little pain in there. So we'll have to kind of work through that. But that's not what this episode is about, right? Now, this yeah. is very interesting because the two people, I, I, I'm, I'm no expert, admittedly, in this space are you and Nancy and and you you reference this other woman is this an industry ruled by women um it feels like it, it, it well you guys rock like, more power to you awesome. boom right we, there yeah there are a lot there are a lot of men in here um I'm yeah. sure there are they're they're <laughs> mostly they're, they're 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 usually across the table for me oh okay. so as you have to have a thick skin guys you have to have a thick skin. I've done this as a chick. Like you have to be able to go into a boardroom and I've had clients call me and they say, I don't know how you controlled that boardroom full of egos, but she did it. Yeah. And it's fun because mm. you're just letting them speak and listening. Yeah. Like maybe that's why we're so good at it because it's just, just to listen. It's listen. not a competition for you to try to out ego those guys. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. no. It's because mm -hmm. they have something. Everybody has something to say. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Well, I have a couple for myself. So, Ashley, it sounds like um, you know you do this primarily on a uh, freelance basis. Are there staff positions where people are doing this, or is that typically the designers within those companies? I started as a staff position. Okay. Yeah, it's and I'm not a freelancer. I'm a business owner, man. Hey, yo, on. watch your language, dude. <laughs> watch Mark, your language. My definition. No, 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 no. no. She's no, an independent contractor. No, 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 no. She's an independent no, contractor. No, no, no. I don't. I don't. Hourly employee. I'm not an hourly, hourly temporary employee. Yeah. Hell no. Mark Slip, no. forgive him. Forgive him for no. your sin. All right. Not happening. All right, let's okay. move on. No. What's your next question? Bring, question? bring a good this question this time. This was a little controversial. <laughs> All right, bring so it. in the news right now, um, it's, it's said that Jeff Bezos, CEO of Amazon, saying death to PowerPoint. And I can see what reasons he is saying that. And I think he's alluding to the idea that he wants to stick mainly to narrative. Um, what's your take on it? Because I know that in the type of presentations that you do, it is essential to have some type of um, you know, physical presentation for the investors in those situations. Mm, yeah, mm, I like this. I want to jump in here too. So go ahead. Do you? Yeah, I do. I just every like you can't. Not everybody is Amazon, right? This is the thing, and this is something that I I sort of have to have to say. Not every presentation is you know a projector and a shitty little four to three screen, but not everybody is like Elon Musk with a thirty foot screen to drive a car on, right? So there's this balance and there's so many companies trying to tell their story. You've got to have it online. You've got to have it like it's, it's what people know and it's what they're like, they're used to. We do presentations, like I was saying, outside of it in this really cool platform where, you know, you can walk on stage and like move around and you've got like your wands and you can throw information up. But the technology is so expensive that it's not it's not accessible to everybody. So. PowerPoint stories, man. Yeah. 
keep using it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's my point of view on this. It's because PowerPoint is synonymous with people who do spreadsheets and accounting things and they've yeah. given it a bad name. So you've heard that other expression, death by a thousand paper cuts. It's like death by a thousand poorly designed PowerPoint presentations are crammed with mm -hmm. too much information, <laughs> no story, no soul, no emotion, and I've just been bored already, yeah. right? Because the business world uses PowerPoint or something like that to get a point across. So when you hire somebody like Ashley as an independent contractor, business owner, or Nancy or us or whoever else, we're going to help you tell that story so that it's more persuasive. That's what we're trying to do. So there's a lot yeah. of opportunity here because you can only imagine how many thousands of PowerPoint decks are created every single day in America. Yep. In the world. There's a comic. There's a comic strip that I used to hang over my desk and I need to find a little shitty version of it. And it was the, the devil in hell inter in interviewing someone. At the bottom, it just says, I need somebody skilled in the art of torture. Do you know PowerPoint? <laughs> and like, that's pretty much like, that's it. That's it's pretty just, much yeah. it. So I, I yeah. think Bezos's comment is really more about poorly designed presentations yeah. by boring people. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's a time I, killer. I, it's a productivity yeah. killer. It's poor communication. Yeah. And I love what you write on your LinkedIn profile, right? Ashley says she takes the board out of boardroom. But don't. Okay. Yeah. There's Boom. a boredom. I take the boredom out of the boardroom. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's it. What else can we say? Mark, did you fix your mic issue? Get that thing close to your face, dude. Come on. <laughs> How's this? There, much better. Yeah. Put your barrier white yeah. on. All right. What else have we got? Yeah. We're gonna wrap this up pretty soon. So, you guys, any last questions? Yeah. Let's scan Facebook and uh, YouTube and let's see what else we got. Mm, let's see here. What else can you tell us? Give us a give us another hot tip. Us. Uh, a hot tip. Give me a hot tip, please. <laughs> <laughs> give you a hot tip that isn't like my secret sauce there's no secret come on <laughs> if you take a powerpoint file yes. right change the end of it yeah you can't you do it on a mac man you gotta do it on a pc okay i won't hate you, you for this go ahead keep going okay take a powerpoint file turn the dot ppt to dot zip right unzip it all your shit's in there if you want to like extract all the information and the photos out of there Skip it, turn it into a dot zip, unload, unpackage it, and then like all your media is in there. All the code is in there for your templates. Everything's in there. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna tell you how to yeah. do it on the Mac side for a keynote. You right click but, on it on yeah. your keynote file and you say show package contents, and boom, all your stuff is in there too. Yeah, but on the on Mac side, you can't put it back together. PC, you can put it back together. Are PC, you, sure? you can play with it and then sure? you can put it back you together sure you can't put it back together no okay we'll just leave it there no. all right so I, I know how to end this possibly unless mark comes in with a really great question let's say that you're teaching a class on presentation design at some prestigious design school somewhere and i asked you this question um, professor can you tell us the five things that you're looking for when you're reviewing powerpoint presentations what are you looking for? Tell me the five things that you're scanning in your mind to determine if it's a good or poorly designed PowerPoint presentation. Are they just handing me a deck or are they presenting? Let's say they present it because okay. the PowerPoint requires people to talk about it as well, right? It's not always just the slide. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yep. what are the five things you're looking for? I'm looking for clarity. Clarity. Um, I'm looking for the story first. I don't want somebody to come in and just introduce themselves and tell me about them. Right, because I don't. I want to hear what you have to say. Okay. Um, I'm looking for a really clean design. I'm looking for consistency. I'm looking for you know making sure that everything is the same. When it comes to if you use titles, I want to see them crisp and clear. Mm -hmm. um, I'll ask you if if I'm teaching a presentation design class mm -hmm. and you're done your presentation, I'll say, "Show me the master. Let me see it. Show I will me the what? change it." Show me the master. The master. Oh, right? you want yeah, to check out master. how clean I am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I want Perfect. it to, I want it to be genuine. I want to be able to take that story and talk about it when I go out for beer after work. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's the thing. That's where everything happens is like, oh, I got a great story to tell you. It's not, oh, I've got this really cool technology deck to show you. It's like the deck makes you say, I got a great story to tell you. Do you hear this? I got a great story. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. 
Okay, I'm working on the show notes right now as we are talking. That's why I'm a little distracted. Mark, you got a question for it. Thank you for doing that, by the way. Marcus, mm-hmm. what do we got? Um, well, we were just talking about you know the use of tools in PowerPoint Keynote, but um, are there any other tools that you'd recommend to use to create things like the infographics that you had shown? Yeah, Illustrator. I, I use Illustrator all the time. <laughs> Hold on, you can barely even say that you're. Blah, 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 blah. Come on, Illustrator. I use Illustrator all the time. Use the, I use uh, Illustrator. Creative Suite. That's what she's saying. Yeah, exactly, exactly. If you have the skill to do, like, yeah, there's tons. I am constantly making sure that I'm on my game with my design skills because this is there. Yeah, they're out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I've seen a cool piece of uh, software called Prezi. Have you guys used that, or have you used that, Ashley? I don't like yeah. it. Don't like it? There's That's, also Google Slides. No. People who yeah, like slides. Google Slides. Yeah. Whatever. I, it's, I, it's, I, yeah. I think Google Slides is there. Yeah. Pressy is there. I like PowerPoint and Keynote because it, it just, it's consistent. There's no surprises. People, yeah, let's stick with those. I have mm-hmm. opinions. Let's stick with those. Mm, yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. I, th- I think that's that's it. I'm going to do my show re- review before we say goodbye to Ashley and thank her for being on the show. Let's just hang on for a second. Let's, uh, let me pull this up here. Boom. All right. Here we go, guys. Here are my show notes. First, realize that you only have 25 minutes to get somebody's attention, even though it's a 45-minute meeting. That's the real meat that you have. So that means you must be a very judicious editor. Cut everything else out except for what's really important. Well, what's important? Here's the step. One, listen. Be a good listener. Don't worry about the egos in the room. Just tune into what's important. Read the person. Watch them. How uh, The inflection, the words that they use, that's where you know the story is going to be. And then distill this into something. Well, how do you distill this? You need to be well-read yourself. You have to be sort of knowledgeable in the field that you're going to be working with so that you're not doing catch-up. What is that all for? Is to develop a story, a really compelling story that's driven by emotion, that's genuine. And then you got to get into the craft. Make it look beautiful. Make it consistent. Really design all the graphics and realize that make every frame count. And the last part is... Help your clients rehearse, or if it's you doing this, rehearse, 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 work out the kinks, and refine that thing, polish that diamond off. Five things that Miss or Professor, Professor Ashley Smithers is going to be looking for in your PowerPoint yeah. presentation is, one, yeah. clarity. Make sure it's freaking clear. Start with the story. Story first. Find the hook. Get me interested. Don't talk about yourself. It's not about you. Put the pride away. Three, make it clean. Clean design, clean masters makes Ashley a happy woman. Four, be consistent. Find ways to link the topography, the color palette, the visual language with the brand. Be consistent. And the whole point of it is to make it shareable. Is there a story? And don't use shitty stock photography. (laughs) That's an asterisk on one of those things. Okay. Okay. So you guys are sitting there thinking, oh my God, $100,000 deck. And all I have to say to that is, hells yeah. Wowza. Hells yeah. And all you need to do is forget about what you heard about PowerPoint or Keynote or anything. It's all about telling good stories. Miss Ashley owns a studio called 1821, her time of birth. And if you want more information about Ashley, visit 1821.ca because she's Canadian, all right? And you can hit up on Instagram and Twitter at 1821 Studio, and you can also find her in Behance at 1821 Studio. So, Ashley, I just want to say thank you very much for coming on the show and it's a it's an honor and it's a it's a privilege to talk to you and i think there's a lot more dialogue you and i have to have because i need some of those secrets i, I want to level <laughs> up my game and and that's what i'm interested in so thank you very much guys let's give her a round of applause Woo! oh everybody in right now all right excellent thank you very much and i'm going to take us out of this show now so stick tight i'm gonna talk to you after the show <laughs>